Welcome to WatchGuard Security Byte. I'm Corey Nockreiner. Today's story is the Citrix data breach. Late last Friday, some big news arose when Citrix publicly announced that they've suffered some sort of network breach and attackers have potentially stolen six terabytes of business documents from this very big company. You've certainly heard of Citrix. Chances are some of you use their products. They have over 400,000 customers and apparently they have products in all of the Fortune 100 companies out there. So they're a big company for sure. A lot of us use their products. Anyways, on Friday in a blog post, the CISO warned that they had just learned from the FBI, so from an external source, that a international hacker, which is kind of code for a potential nation state attacker, had breached their network and had been on their network for a while and stolen a ton of data. Now, apparently some of this news also comes from a company called ReSecurity, a company that says it discovered this breach and discovered that these attackers, who allegedly may be associated with an Iranian hacking group, made off with six terabytes of data. While Citrix just mentioned this last Friday and they disclosed it because the FBI shared the information with them, according to ReSecurity, ReSecurity warned Citrix about this attack in late December of last year. Now, not a lot is known about how the attackers made it into the network yet, but according to Citrix, the FBI suspects something called password spraying. And this kind of like credential stuffing, but a little different, is when attackers just try a ton of common passwords for a number of different logins for users at your organization. The thought being that, you know, someone at your organization is probably using a common word for a password, so they just spray a ton of very common passwords with a lot of users. Now, that is what some people suspect might have caused the initial part of this breach, but it could have just as easily been credential stuffing, which is when they use passwords that were stolen in other data breaches to see if that user uses the same password for their Citrix account as well. Anyways, what does seem to be clear is somehow an attacker did learn a password of one of the users at Citrix, and then that kind of is the start of a privilege escalation. Once somebody has even an underprivileged password for one of your users, it's much easier to start to gain access to more privileged areas of your network. Anyways, this is just kind of big news since it's such a big company. I find it very interesting that Citrix didn't learn of this breach on their own. They had to be told by uh, the FBI and allegedly even ReSecurity told them long before, which they seem to have ignored until now. So it's very interesting to know such a big company had a data breach that they didn't know about for so long. The big question, however, is what data did they steal? Does this affect Citrix customers? So far, Citrix just says it's business documents and doesn't really share any detail uh, about what was stolen and if it affects any of uh, Citrix's customers, but I'm sure in the future we'll learn more about it. However, the main reason I'm sharing this story is kind of as a practical guide to security best practices. You know, we're not there to point fingers at companies that get breached. A lot of companies will get breached, you know, even if you have good security. But it's about what we as an industry can learn from breaches. And the one thing you should be thinking about right now is authentication security. As I've been saying in a lot of videos lately, authentication is the cornerstone of security. All our security controls are really designed to allow our trusted users in, but to keep untrusted users out. However, to do that effectively, you have to know who you can and can't trust. And all of this is based on authentication. If your authentication is not strong enough to really strongly uh, validate that one of your users is really who they say they are, that's a big problem. And as you've learned from many different breaches in the past, passwords alone are not enough. Biometrics alone are not enough. The only way to really secure authentication strongly today is to use some sort of multi-factor authentication, whether it be immediate multi-factor or risk-based multi-factor. In any case, you have to use multiple factors to really ensure that the user that you think is in your network really is the user you want there. And as I mentioned before, WatchGuard has a fantastic product called AuthPoint that can add multi-factor authentication to all your uh, enterprise authentication needs. Anyway, I'm sure we'll share more details about this story if we learn anything additional in the coming weeks. But until then, I highly recommend you consider multi-factor authentication for your enterprise 
enterprise login. That's it for today's Security Byte. Thanks for watching.